nagbabalik po ang One You Connect and now we will have the segment on Immigration 101. Hi po, uh, good afternoon everyone. Welcome back to One You Connect and you are now watching Immigration 101. Um, today's topic is about care workers. It is back. Um, thousands of additional care workers can now be recruited to boost the adult social care workforce, workforce following temporary changes to the health and care visa to make social care workers, care assistants, and home care workers eligible for a 12-month period starting from the 15th of February 2022. The reason for this is to make it quicker, cheaper, and easier for social care employers to recruit eligible workers to fill vital gaps. Um, the coronavirus pandemic has highlighted a range of staff shortages within the social care sector, placing pressures on the existing workforce despite the incredible and tireless efforts of social care staff. Uh, the boost was recommended by the Migration Advisory Committee, or MAC, to make care workers and home carers eligible for the health and care visa and add the occupation to the shortage occupation list, or SOL. Now, we have someone who had taken a journey in the UK. She came as a student and then switched to a work visa uh, to work as a care assistant. And now she settled in the UK with her family. A few years ago, UK stopped recruiting care assistants, which meant not many Filipinos were able to switch from student to work visa. I would like for you to all um, to welcome Marilu Romarate Ragas. Hi. Hello. Good afternoon, Hi. everyone. Hi, Miss Crystal. How are you? I'm good. Happy Sunday, Pusa Inyo. And thank you for um, giving your Sunday to Juan Iyo Connect. And, uh, and it's a pleasure to have you on the show. So welcome, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me. <laughs> So I understand, because as you know, many Filipinos who came to the UK, I remember this, in fact, in, uh, in 2008, when they started the points-based system. And yeah. I, I actually uh, got the information from the Philippine Embassy when they had the uh, representative from the British Embassy that a lot of Filipinos came to the UK to study and with, with the intention to work after they've done their course. So tell me about you in journey, Po Nino. So when did you start? You know, when did you arrive to the UK and how it all began for you? Um, that was like 2009. I came um, as a student. So I studied for health and social care for a year. That was 2009 here in Golders Green College. And yeah, after, after, I finished my health and social care. Um, I was so blessed to to found this a company, and I did. Um, they sponsored me for for the working permit, so I was given three years for that. And then when I finished with with my three years, and then I was as well um, renewed by them. My, my permit was renewed. So on my, on my time, that was like, you will have, you will complete your working permit for five years, and then you will be able to, to apply as indefinite leave to remain. So that whole year of my stay as a student, that wasn't, that wasn't included. So I started when I first got my, um, working permit that was 2010. So I was one of the blessed students that was given a chance to to have that working permit. So from the domiciliary care, and then I went to a care home in Finchley Road, and they also um, gave me, uh, sponsored me the working permit 
to be able to complete the whole five years. And then that's the time for me to, to um, apply for my indefinite leave to remain. So that's my journey for my student and then my working permit uh, for my domiciliary care. We were given different, different clients. So we were lived in for a week or two weeks. So hindi talaga siya yung easy, but for the family, you, ha you will do everything. Because at the moment, um, at that time, I was the only one here. My family wasn't with me. So I was living in. So okay lang na mag live in kasi wala naman sila at the time. And then when I did my um, care home experience, that was also three years, that was the time that um, I'm already, uh, actually we are allowed, we are allowed to, to apply for our family as dependent when we were in our student permit, student visa, but I did not do that because it's really hard. It's really hard to, to stay in a foreign country without anyone. I don't have family. I have friends who really, really helped me a lot. They adopted me. They, it, 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 it's, it's a, a journey that um, you, will, you will learn from experience, really. And yeah, then... And it's not but, cheap either, is it? In the yes, it, it, it you wasn't. Are, it, you, are, you were working part-time. Is that correct? Well, you yeah, were yeah. And that was uh, MVQ level three. Level three, yeah. And as you said, on uh, health and social care, a lot of Filipinos were, were doing that course. You did the same course, is that yes, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, I so did. Before you came to the UK, what were you doing? Did you have a, a different profession, a different job? Well, I'm a, a nursing in profession as well, back home. And I was a clinical instructor for the caregivers stand, Canada, Canada Standard. So before coming here, I was a clinical instructor in the Philippines. Wow. So you, you had to do a, a different route. You had to take a, a different route to be able to qualify for the job here in the UK as a, a healthcare assistant. Is that right? It's, it's, it's not really a, because it's still my profession. I'm, 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 I'm a nursing. So it's not really like a different, um, it's, it's, it's like, I, I really don't know this this um, land, UK. So it's okay, really so a phase. A a phase. To do, just to <laughs> yeah, and a friend of mine asked me, if I want I want to 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 come in in UK. I said I don't know UK because I always wanted to go America because of my family. So I said, okay, I'll try. So yeah, it's just straight, straight, straightforward application for the student visa. But twelve years, thirteen years later, here you are with your family. I know, yeah, yeah. Well, I the know. job itself, and um, Marilu, tell us about the job itself. I know it's not easy. Uh, it's definitely hard work. So just describe the, the job itself. The job itself, when I was in living in, living in job, in my first job as domiciliary care, in domiciliary care, it was, it was not easy because we are only given one, one it's a 24-hour job two of us in one client and we are given only one um, one off for a week, one day off for a wow. week. So we are doing that like if, if we don't have anything important to go out or anything, we will just have an overtime. We will just have work and we, we just have to work and work. So it's basically, it's not 24 hours, you know, because it's every day night and day, night and day for the whole week. So right. I did I did that for three years. Mm -hmm. But do you love years. the job? Do you love what I you love do? the job. It's my passion to care. I love it and I don't it's it because if you're you have the passion, if you have the love, any you don't feel it like tiring. You don't feel it like tiring because you love it. You love doing it. So if, you're actually currently at work, aren't you? You are. Are you? Yes, I'm in my workplace. It's your day off. Okay, it's your day <laughs> it's off. It's not a day off. It's not a day off. So you know that what happened in 2020, we had the pandemic. Yeah. Um, obviously, the, it affected everyone. How did it affect you as a, a 
what's your position now? What's your job now? At the moment, I'm in the private caring um, mm -hmm. sector. Before this, I was in the hospital as an assistant practitioner in Royal Free Hospital. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was there for three years. So how did but, the pandemic affect you uh, in terms of your job? Actually, we are the only, the healthcare sector, as you all know, that it's not really affecting us. We still work, work and work and work. Even if, even if the demand is very high at the moment, at that time when we have the pandemic, even if your your health is already at risk, you still have to do because that's your that's your profession. So is this no off from us at that time? Even that experience of the pandemic, we are shifting in a in a private caring, you know. So we are not allowed to go out. So we, I'm away from my family at the time. And that's your beautiful family we can see. Oh, <laughs> thank you. And that's one of so my you ladies. Have two boys. You have two boys and that's Yeah, I've got two boys, yeah. Husband. And this is the, the lady here? Yeah, that's the, the current lady that I'm looking after. And that one in the wheelchair was my part-time. I was with her for eight years now. I see. And did you have COVID yourself? Yes, I, I, the time, the first lockdown, yeah, my, me and my husband, yeah, we, we had. And, and how was that for you? It's, it it's not, you? Uh, it's not really bad. It's not, it wasn't okay. really bad. I just lost my, my taste and my, my senses, my taste and my, my smell. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you love the job you're doing and you obviously, you know, still working for the health sector. Um, yeah. Now that the care workers, uh, they're now back in the care assistance, you know, you can now apply to the UK. Um, what tips do you have for our future applicants? Well, the only thing I can say is that just build yourself. When you are still, the excitement, the adrenaline is always there but you have to build yourself before coming here and make sure that with, with all the requirements, you have all the requirements. And, you know, specifically, I think they're still asking for the IELTS, but to be honest with you, it's the, um, the heart, the heart and the mind that needs to be prepared. Because if you are in a foreign country, things may go wrong, influence may go wrong, but at the end of the day, it's you yourself. It's you that you need to make strong to be strong. And you really have to pray hard. And if it's your faith, it's your faith. If it's not, then it's for me, it is really it's helpful that you have the guidance and you have the support of the family from back home. And it will understand you because, you know, when, when you are here working or like, you have to adjust for a few for a few months. You have to adjust. A lot of adjustment to be done in your first, you know, first in a foreign country. As per my experience. That's very inspiring, Marie Lou. And I, I, I love that. The fact is that, you know, you were here by yourself, you started off as a student, you switched to uh, to work as a healthcare assistant, and then Work, worked your way up at the same time, you know, having a family here as well. It's never easy. A working mom is never easy. I know. But <laughs> I, and I, I salute you for, 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 for doing Thank what you. you do. And this country actually really needs um, care workers. You know, it, it affected uh, the health sector during the pandemic, especially. So uh, thank you so much. So do you have any uh, anyone to thank yourself? You know, any messages you want to put out there for our? Yeah, um, I just wanted to say thank you for for the people that's been an instrument for my journey here, especially the Alcantara Consultancy. They were the one who helped me with my um, application for my children, for my family from back home. So they were really the one. Until now, we just had. Uh, they just got their indefinite leave to remain just a couple of days ago. They were approved. So I was really Yay. thankful for 
for the Alcantara Consultancy for helping me, you know, have this dream to be united with my family. Thank yes, you very I much. Think Jean, and, Jean Alcantara is the uh, the founder of Alcantara Consultancy, and it's actually, as you know, he is one of our uh, presenters here at the uh, One EU Connect. Yes, yes. <laughs> And so, thank God for everything, for all the blessings, because without him, I couldn't do everything here right. on my own. I totally agree. I totally agree. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, thank you Enjoy well. the beautiful sunshine. And please stick around to see that cake, the final. Yes. The I was really cake. loving that. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> so like thank that. you, Lou. I'm just going to finish off um, uh, this uh, talk about care workers. So thank you for, for joining again. Thank you very much. So here we are for mga kababayan thinking of uh, coming to the U UK as care workers. It's there. You know, it's now actually on the shortage occupation list. The, uh, the Home Office has actually invested £465.2 million in supporting recruitment and retention of social care staff through the challenging winter period so we don't know if it's going to be extended at 12 month period but fingers crossed so can we have the uh the slide chad it's just really to show um that the shortage occupations um the care worker and home carers it's under the code 6145 and the, the related job titles include care assistant care worker carer home care assistant, home carer, support worker, um, nursing home. Second slide, Chad, please. But please note that private households or individuals other than sole traders sponsoring someone to work for their business cannot sponsor skilled worker applicants. It means that if you know someone in the UK who wants to sponsor you just in a private home they cannot do that they have to be a company they have to be a business so thank you chad for that now uh, as i said earlier the temporary measure is expected to be um, implemented actually it's it is implemented now uh in february 2022 for a minimum of 12 months just quickly talk about the details of the temporary measure the minimum salary is 20480 It is aligned with sal salary levels of senior care workers. Um, and the job level is level three. Now, the job offer must be in an eligible health or social care job, including care workers, care assistants, and care home, uh, home care workers for an approved employer. It means they have to be a licensed sponsor. Um, the applicant uh, must read, write, speak, and understand English to at least level B1. So that's B1 level. Um, the uh, sponsorship foreign nationals will need to be sponsored by a licensed employer, as I said, to qualify for the health and care visa. Now, the, the, this is the most important thing, is that the cost for the application is £232 per person for up to three years and uh, 464 pounds for more than three years. That's really, really uh, cheap compared to other um, work permits. Now, the immigration health surcharge, it is exempt. Normally the standard fee is 624 pounds, but uh, with this job, you don't have to. Now, since 2021, uh, the departure of the UK from the European Union, this has led to the principle that there will now be a, a level playing field between new workers entering, whether they are coming from the EU or the rest of the world, such as the US or Asia. Um, so basically, anyone coming from Europe or anywhere else, they've got to apply for a work permit. Okay, so that's it. So if you have any questions about the care worker visa, please contact one you connect to send us a message. And I'm Crystal Dias. I'm an immigration solicitor. So thank you for joining me.
sa Juan You Connect ako si Jean Alcantara I'm Crystal Dias for Juan You Connect Nagbabalik po ang One You Connect and this is our last segment before we end the program. Crystal, I have one question for you. This is always the question of our kababayans actually in the Philippines because I do stories for ABS-CBN News, right? So ang tanong nila palagi is, kung nag apply ka sa Pilipinas, you want to go to the UK as a healthcare worker, ano ba yung mga tell telltale signs na... Um, yung isang recruiter ay illegal recruiter o yung hindi you know kasi ang dami naman ngayon na application na you can you can easily apply online so what should they remember so that they don't fall victims into this um, illegal recruitment that is a very good question Rose you know I've been asked many times about that um, the main thing that you have to watch out for is that if anyone asks you for money for thousands and thousands of pounds, that means that's a scam. You know, you've got to be careful because the employee is not supposed to be paying the recruiter. It's the employer who's paying the, the recruiter. So just watch out. I know there's a lot of um, like on social media and Facebook, you know, a lot of them looking for, you know, for uh, for employ migrants, you know, coming uh, from abroad to, to inviting them to come here. You know, we've got the job for you. You know, we're gonna ha have the visa for you ready, but please pay us this and that. And you know, I've heard that they've asked five thousand, six thousand pounds. You know, that that ballpark figure. Please do not send the money. Make sure make a point that you can check it with the, um, uh, there's a, a list, a register of recruitment agencies in the Philippines. Um, mm -hmm. You can check if they have a license and also check with the, the Philippine embassy, yes. you know, uh, if they're actually uh, legitimate because the embassy would know yeah. who, who's the red flag, don't go there. You know, they will give mm -hmm. you advice. Sure. Exactly. So, and all the, do, not, do not let go of your money because that's your hard-earned money. <laughs> exactly. And all the information on how to contact the Philippine Embassy, it's yes. in the website. So you can drop an email. Madali lang po. Uh, write an email. Send it to the Philippine Embassy. Check with uh, even in the Philippines in Polo Owa. You can, you can also do that. But thank you for the advice. I hope we were able to get and enlighten some of our kababayans or watching us this afternoon. So magbabalik na ang ating guest kanina, Christina and Valerie to show us yung kanyang second decoration for the king. Wow. Yeah. Oh, this is blossoms. Oh my gosh, how amazing is that? We're going to the top because we're going to be holding it. We're going to be holding it on the side. Oh yes. Well, anyway, so I know labor of love, yun. Because we're long ago we didn't see it. Hindi tayo yes. nakasama, kaya alam ko gusto nyo ipakita yung talagang the best of your <laughs> pinakamabilis, maganda at pinakamabilis. Thank you, yeah. Valerie and Christina. Wait, well, well, just to say, well, Valerie is the one with the long hair, right? Just yeah. to make sure, you, we, we need to know which one is which. It's like Ant and Deck. <laughs> which one is Valerie and which one is Christina? So Valerie is the, the one with the long hair, right? Yes, yeah. Valerie yeah. is with the long hair. Pareho silang maganda. And Christina with a short one. Yeah. Tell us nga naman, paano ba kayo, your, your best friends, magkasama kayo sa negosyo, magkasama kayo sa passion ninyo, lahat-lahat ng ginagawa ninyo sa buhay. Paano kayo daw nagkakilala? We've ah. been friends from our home in the Philippines, yeah. so we came here together. And common, uh, introduced by a common friend, and we just instantly clicked, talaga. So after that, we were all together together with that common friend who introduced us. So we were always We go everywhere and anywhere. Uh, kahit na anong oras. <laughs> okay. And so tell us about this 
tell us about this event in the Philippines. Kasi na-surprise ako when you told me na talaga you were able to do that. And ngayon mas malaki na. So yung mga nanonood sa atin sa Pilipinas na gustong uh, want to attend that event, yung Cake Fiesta, Fiesta Filipinas na? Manila. Manila? Yes, about it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, so it's basically the first ever international cake and bake expo in the Philippines. So it's literally like what we saw in Birmingham, um, and we brought that team in the Philippines. It's going to be on November 24 to 26, SMX Function Rooms 3 and 4. Yeah, so they can expect lots of international cake artists, different collaborations, displays, uh, local and international vendors, and yeah. Okay, merong tanong dito ang aking kaibigan, Tita Nelly Fami is asking, paano daw po mag-order ng mga cakes sa inyo? Uh, if they're based in London, saan, saan nila pwedeng um, ipadala? Saan kayo pwedeng i-email, i-message? Um, our website is www.queenofartskitchencakes.com So same din po ang aming Facebook page, it's called the same. And you can always look us up. You know, we send us a private message and comes to either of us for the vaccine as soon as we can. Yes. Kaya yeah. lang po, uh, actually, we are really more on the teaching. We actually don't do cakes for orders. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, it's mm-hmm. been a long time since we did the cake for orders. It's really ano, talagang online teaching or physical teaching. Talaga for me. So that's, um, ano, that's what we offer. Oo. Pero you sa- you promise me, di ba, na pag nag-order ako, you will do it. Basta bigyan. Bigyan lang kayo lang. Bigyan lang kayo lang. Bigyan lang kayo lang. Utang to from way, way back. Right? Yes. Yes. We still do orders every now and then if necessary or special occasion. Yeah. Go to si Crystal. Go away na. Okay. And from Virgilio Quison na nanonood mula sa Pilipinas, yan daw ba ang cake na Yan ba ang lasong langit na cake from London there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. May pagbati rin tayo sa mga nanunood kanina na nandito si um, Lito Fami, nanunood din po siya. At saka si um, Perlinda Montelipa, no? ang mami ni Jay, nanunood din sa atin. Thank you for watching kita. And uh, my friend, a family friend namin, si Miss Ella Marcos, also watching. So, batiin nyo na po bago tayo mag-close ng ating program. Ang mga uh, gusto nyo batiin. Go ahead, Crystal. Yan yeah, say, uh, Kyla, uh, she's here with us. And also, uh, my mom is here. Uh, happy birthday, mom. And uh, she's close with uh, Tita Nelly. And we also have Kyla Ignacio Zabala from Canada. Wow. So, saying hello to to, to uh, Nelly family. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. We have Stephanie family also watching from Pangasinan. So, and also, Mayora, Mayora Maribel Pasqua Fabor nanonood sa atin. I, uh, nasa oh, hello, Mrs. Carito, si Miss uh, Maribel Fabor. Thank you for watching. And we have Anna, Anna uh, Lu- Luigi from Ilao Limited. Uh, and I think, oh, Eclair Rinal, that sounds familiar. <laughs> Maria Sonia de Quiron, Eclair Rinal is watching. Gusto niya rin matutong maggumawa ng cake. <laughs> it's never too late. Talagang, you can start anytime. You just really want to want it. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, definitely. So ako, I have to pick up on that. Maybe I can invite my daughter now because she's keen on learning new things. Especially, <laughs> you know, cooking, baking, so konting tiyaga lang. Anyway, maraming salamat sa inyong dalawa. I hope to see you soon um, yes. in person. We will yes. do one of these uh, activities that we used to do together. Pahabo lang, nanonood din sa atin si Mary Rose Ojeda Ruby. Uh, nag-guest po siya sa ano, sa One You Connect uh, during the lockdown. Thank you Mary Rose, uh, my Rose for watching. Maraming salamat. Nag-bop, Thank you. 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 Bye. Bye. Abangan po ninyo sa susunod na linggo, mga susunod na linggo, mapapanood po ninyo 
one home with uh, yours truly, and of course, one day with Chiara Gregorio. Ito po ang kwentong Pinoy, kwentong migrante, kwentong One You Connect. Ako po si Rose Eclarinal. And I'm Crystal Diaz. Hanggang sa muli, Hanggang sa, muli. sa One Hanggang You Connect. You connect. Salamat. Hi, Jay. Hi, Chad. Thank you. Hi, Jean. Juan, saan ka man dalhin ang kapalaran? Iisumbayan lang sa puso mo'y laman, pinagmulan at babalikan. Konting tiis na lang at hanggang Gregorio.